A pleasant evening to you and you too, Blam. We're delighted you've tuned in and that we have this opportunity to study from the pages of God's Word. If you have your Bible in Exodus chapter 1, I want to read verse 22 for the thought of our study. So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. When you read your Bible, you'll find that one of the great men of all time was a man identified as Moses. His name has gone down in the book of God's Word as one of the great men of faith, as you read in Hebrews 11, verses 24 and 25. However, at this time, I believe it would be good for you and I to go back and see some things that happened before this man became great, to observe the faith of his mother and father so that one might reach his potential. There are many things we might overlook if we don't go back and read and study. The first thing I want us to observe is we find this man identified as Moses when he was a baby, and he's put up on the Nile River. And I want us to think about this was way before he became great. And there's many things we can come to learn about the baby on the Nile and things after he was on the Nile. First of all, I want to remember the charge that Pharaoh of Egypt made. And I want us to understand what a cruel and harsh command he gave in the book of Exodus chapter 1 and verse 22 when he said, you destroy all the male children, you cast them into the river. Now you can save the girls, but I want you to make sure that all the infant boys are put to death. I want you to think about what a cruel command. But there's something I think we need to stop and see here. I want us to observe that here was a man who feared what might become of these young boys that grew up. Whom you fear, you often destroy. And evidently there was something about the youth that caused this man to fear. They would grow into manhood and might even overtake his army. And so he says, destroy him in the river. Just throw them in. Here's a splash and a few bubbles, and it's all over. Nothing left behind. No grave. No bodies. No markers. Nothing to remind them of the child that they had just born. Can you imagine a mother and father at this time about to give birth and to see if that baby was a male child? What must have went through their mind? But I want you to think about the parents of Moses. In your Bible, in the book of Exodus and the second chapter, it said there was a man of the house of Levi who went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. And so the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, dabbed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reed by the river's bank. Here is a woman who had faith. She could have been put to death by preparing this little ark, and she did not fulfill the law of Pharaoh, the decree to put her son to death, but instead she prepared a little ark and laid him on it. Then in verse 4, she had his sister Miriam stand afar off to know what's going to be done. So as the child floated down the Nile River, the daughter followed beside and watched her brother. Then you'll find in verse 5 that notice what happened. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Now, I want you to stop and think about that for just a moment. Here we find that Moses' parents had a child. That may not really stand out to us. But I want you to think about they had this child, and they had dreams as parents for that child. They had high hopes for that child. And when the child's born, they had to face a decision. What are we going to do? And notice his mother, and what a strong word that is in our vocabulary. Mother. The mother of Moses was indeed an outstanding person. She takes the babe, she makes an ark, and she puts him up on the river now. And no doubt we should stand amazed at her courage and faith and how she went about doing this kind act and this loving act for her child. 
She feared God above Pharaoh. And this is the kind of fear that is superior and the kind that is pleasing to God. And through her great fear, God was glorified. But notice as the child goes down the river and the daughter of Pharaoh is out there and sees the little ark and calls her servants to uh, get the ark and bring it in. When she sees the child, the child cries. I thought about that. It was a cry in a period of helplessness and peril. The child could not speak. It had no other way to communicate except through its tears. And here was the crying child, and Pharaoh's daughter's heart was touched. She saw this child and knew it was one of the Hebrew women's child, but notice she still was touched. And I thought about the cry of a baby can touch the heart of an individual. But then I want you to think about something else. All these things took place as Moses was upon the Nile as an infant. And you know what? I think we can learn some lessons from that today. I think we need to stop and consider Moses on the river Nile and think about how we can apply that to our day and time. The first thing I think we learn is the value of youth. Remember, Pharaoh feared the young. He knew they would grow up one day and they could become powerful men, powerful leaders, great warriors. And you know, if we're not careful in our day and time, we might overlook the value of our young people. Are we letting them understand that they can be important in the kingdom of God? They can become leaders and warriors in the kingdom of God. And many times, if we're not careful, we do not give them the proper attention and proper encouragement where they grow and are nurtured and can become great leaders in the kingdom. Secondly, we need to remember enemies don't overlook them. Enemies see children who have potential. And now I'll tell you, that's what's destroying our nation. A lot of schools are trying to indoctrinate our children and teach them error and lead them away from righteousness, lest they become great leaders in the kingdom of God and become great warriors and citizens in the kingdom. And I want to tell you, there's a movement to destroy the young. They lead to believe that freedom is in doing whatever you want to do, that freedom is in living a worldly life. And I want to tell you, that's not where freedom is. One is free in Christ because their sins have been taken away. They are right with God, and they're a child of God. But I'll tell you what else we've done. We've allowed moral decay to seep into not only this world, but into the home life. And many of them are being taught to deny God and laugh at God and the laugh at God's people. And you want to know why they're doing that in education many places? They know these young people could become great individuals in our nation. And the devil knows in regard to the kingdom of God, if he can destroy the youth, there will be no church of tomorrow. I want to tell you, I think he is doing everything he can to get young men and young ladies to give up their faith and to live an ungodly life. But I want to tell you, there's another lesson I think we can learn. We ought not overlook young men and young women. I want to tell you, when you overlook them, you forget to see the value and potential they have. And I wonder that can hurt them. Even the shock of Pharaoh's death command is one thing, but I want to tell you, have you ever thought about what cuts to the heart of a young man and young woman is when we don't teach them right from wrong and we don't instruct them about their potential. And it's a shame that many are destroyed by forcing our young people to be adults before they're ready. You know, sometimes we expect them to act like adults when they're still children. We expect them to make adult decisions when they're still children. You know one thing? The hope of our nation and the hope of the local church is the young people. But I want to tell you something else. We need to be thankful when we hear young people. I've been places where people come out and they say, I heard babies crying and it distracted me. I'm just, uh, just bothered by the young children who maybe aren't paying attention. I want to tell you something. You should be bothered if we don't hear children. We should be hard bothered when we don't hear babies crying. I want to tell you, I recognize there comes a time that a parent might have to take one out, but I wouldn't say to you with all kindness and yet candor, we should be more concerned the silence in a room instead of the crying of a baby. But that brings up something else. 
we need to teach them to fear God. And that's the need we need for our day and time. First, we need to fear God ourselves like the parents of Moses and teach them to fear God. The steady hand of a mother is willing to do anything to spare her child from death. But what we need to also be willing to do is do anything to spare their children from spiritual death. The most important thing your child has is not your uh, acceptance of what they want to do, not your approval of any wrong they want to do. The most important thing that you have in your life, in their life, is teaching them about God and right and wrong and respect for God's Word and His authority. But that brings up something else. Have we thought about the tears of children? Do we not hear their cries today? They're so helpless and need protection. And there are many who are in peril. And you know, the only way that some of them can speak is through their tears. And you know what we need to do? We need to be people whose hearts are touched by the tears of the young people. That we go to their aid and we set the proper example before. How can we sit back and not be touched by the tears of the young? Have you ever thought about Moses on the Nile River? Have you ever thought about the lesson that teaches us? You ever thought about the importance of a baby, even in the womb? As the psalmist David brought out in the 139th Psalm. And then after the child is born, the importance of teaching the child right from wrong and teaching the child about God and building up his faith or her faith in the days of their youth so that when they become grown, they can be great men, great women in the kingdom of God. May we take what Moses' parents did and may we do it with our children as well. I want to thank you for studying with me this evening.